let's talk about Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury. Uh, this is my fifth Bradbury book of the year or something like that, I think. Um, yes, yeah, something like the fifth. And um, it's, yeah, my favourite. It's my favourite Bradbury I've read so far, actually. I think I've read seven or eight Bradbury's total. Uh, this is one of his two most well-known novels, I guess, along with uh, because though the Halloween tree had a film about it, uh, it's not that well known necessarily. The Martian Chronicles is a novel, but it's really a fix up uh, of short stories. Whereas this and Something Wicked This Way Comes um, were both written as as novels, albeit from um, in both cases, partial earlier like short stories or ideas or fragments. Um, in this, yeah, Guy Montag is a fireman. His job is to destroy the most illegal of commodities, the source of all discord and unhappiness, the printed book. Montag never questions the destruction or his own bland life until he's shown a past where people didn't live in fear and a present where one sees the world through ideas. Montag starts hiding books in his home. Soon they'll make him run for his life. Uh, so it's written in the early 50s uh, in terms of uh, the, the novel is, I think, the, uh, the core short story that um, went into it, The Pedestrian, uh, was a 40s story, but all, that is not Guy Montag, that is adapted and rebuilt into into this book. book. Uh, basically, yeah, this is a, a dystopia. Uh, it's a dystopic science fiction about a world where it's been concluded that um, because books disagree, because uh, books create imaginary worlds, that kind of thing, uh, things where, where which kind of confuse people, um, just a hint of Plato there. Uh, but yeah, they, they need to be destroyed. Um, and this leads to a, a kind of an America which is highly dependent on um, commercialised content, on consumption, consumerism, uh, on the idea that you get pleasure um, in, in a purely kind of carnal way. Just as you no, know, there's nothing spiritual or intellectual or anything out there, it's just physical pleasures. Um, th there are obviously cracks at the seam. We see that from very early on, but uh, it's it's a world that you know t t t trundles along, um, and it partly does so due to the heroism of the firemen. Except the firemen are immediately presented as people who you know there's something odd about how much they enjoy destroying these books. Um, it's a book about civilization and barbarity in that sense. Uh, it's a book about freedom, intellectual freedom particularly. It it's worthwhile saying Bradbury was, I suppose, in lots of ways. Um, he'd often probably, I think, be described as right-wing or libertarian, certainly, uh, though that's not always the same thing. Um, but f certainly for him, he was disturbed by McCarthyism and the early early blows of McCarthyism and the and the uh, uh, Red Terror, Red Scare. Not that he was, on the other hand, pro-communist uh, by no means. He was friends with people of all kinds of political persuasions, progressives like Gene Roddenberry, uh, conservatives like Russell Kirk um, or... or uh, uh, Gene Wolfe, you know, he admired uh, people from across the spectrum. He was interested in intellectual freedom and intellectual exchange. And um, he, uh, Ray Harryhausen, libertarian and uh, animator, uh, you know, very interested in a wide variety of ideas and exchange. And this is obviously at some level a, a, a furious response to the idea that this is dangerous, that intellectual exchange is what is dangerous rather than something else. Um, now, what's what's there are lot, lots of strength and strength in it uh it is because it is a sort of green town usa book it's not literally set in green town uh, particularly uh that's probably not set that far i'm not i'm trying to remember uh a guy goes to st louis missouri so you know it being in illinois would make sense but bradbury grew up in waukegan and um wrote many of his books based on a fictional version of waukegan illinois uh, but yeah, it's it's set in every town USA, it's set in suburban USA, um, and uh, particularly the suburbia that was growing up in front of Bradbury. So there's a, maybe a degree of criticism there too. Um, that's the issue with this pedestrianism thing, uh, which he himself remembers in LA being kind of uh, stopped by the police for going for a walk. You know, why would you go for a walk on the? You don't need sidewalks. You know, why are you there? You're causing trouble. Um, so, but it's meant to be comfortable in that sense. Oh well, we know this world. This is a nice world. This is a comfortable world. Uh, but he's making the point in his view that obviously this slips towards or has a, a possibility of slipping towards tyranny. So it's a setting he describes well in many books, often very affectionately, here that we see go wrong. So the setting is in that sense strong. His, um, 
his characters are are strong his characters aren't always exceptionally strong they're they're often decent um certainly um and but but and i'd say something wicked this way comes has some very good character work but here guy montag particularly but also some of the other people we see his wife uh the neighbor girl clarice um who he uh, briefly knows um uh his his fire captain bt uh, you know he knows these people uh and we get to know them and we we see that there are layers to them um we also do see with guy and with his wife um and with uh you know or at least one other character as well maybe a couple but the idea that there are arcs there are things where they start in one state and end in another i know that sounds like that's just character 101 but not every book has that not even quite big long sci-fi fantasy books and bradbury doesn't always go for that but here he has characters which have satisfying arcs the writing which for many people is what bradbury is best at is excellent here and in some ways is at his best and i say that in the particular sense that a big problem for bradbury i think um not not crippling but just a thing that i regularly think even though i'm enjoying his writing is he often doesn't know where to stop he doesn't stop putting sugar on the cake um you know the <laughs> And what, what happens is you're like, oh, I'm kind of liking this, but okay, that's pushing a bit too far. I think in my book group, when we read Something Wicked This Way Comes, that was a, a theme a few people touched on was, this feels like this is pushing this sentiment or image too far. It doesn't work. It's fallen apart because he's just so enjoying describing it. Uh, the, he gets away with this most in terms of the abuse of uh, his, his uh, beautiful writing in The Halloween Tree, for instance, where it's meant to be very fantastical and, and faintly silly um, in a dark way. Here which is not a silly book at all and not whimsical he's actually quite restrained there are moments of purple prose and lyricism uh, but more often uh, he uses the kind of colorful powerful language that he's so good at putting together in quite focused restrained ways and it makes it yeah a very satisfying read deeply enjoyable read i greatly greatly enjoyed reading reading it um he knows when to give space as well you know there are as it were both scenes and moments um, there are things where we see characters built up um, and we see that and the language fits that and there are dramatic moments which then the language fits if i had one criticism i think it is is an excellent book uh, my favorite bradbury book and i like bradbury a lot anyway um i think it's well worth reading i think certainly it feels i should say like it's both the book itself and its context and subtext to do with um intellectual openness to each other uh, to the idea of a slow life, the idea that it might be worth just sitting around talking to each other, um, that uh, that there there is some wisdom in the past. Think all these kinds of themes um, are both. Some of them are kind of, I guess, who disagrees with that? But I think they're powerful and poignantly put. And uh, certainly, some people do disagree with some of what I've just said. But and I found them, you know, I think they are important to read. Then they seem timely to me. Uh, but if there's one criticism. Uh, and this is a criticism essentially bradbury makes himself in the foreword it's that there's just a little bit of, of uh, a few areas where you wish there's a tiny bit more development you know you just wish there was another page or two of description or resolution um, and this is mostly about characters there's a sense in which the world is not super developed but i don't mind that too much um the ending could do with another page or two but it doesn't feel too rushed but i just you know i wouldn't mind some of the stuff that happens towards the end to be expanded out um but a couple of characters he explicitly mentions in the foreword uh clarice his neighbor uh, this really kind of interesting eccentric uh neighbor girl who kind of obviously takes a paternal part or somewhat paternal relationship to uh, he doesn't have children of his own um and there's some there's some wry commentary on parents and children and and, and how we look, see our children uh but he uh, yeah clarice <clears throat> doesn't get loads of detail uh she's very very powerful when she's there it's a very powerful character um and bt his captain who is this incredibly articulate poetic character who constantly talks about how much we have to destroy books we don't get as much on him as you might like and are right at the very end in you know 10 seconds or something i will spoil though what he would add to those characters he, he mentions it in the forward he indeed indeed did add to these characters in the play he wrote of it and in other like i think there might have been a radio version uh, so he did expand it but it's an interesting thing he says he kind of wanted to revise this you know make it the revised and expanded edition think of stephen king's the gunslinger something like that ah i can see a flaw here it seems fixable i'll just add this or change this uh, but he concluded that this was written by it's a classic it was written by another man at another time and he wants to honor what that guy put down rather than being like oh maybe i can fix it uh, the broken sword actually was similar 
uh, by Paul Anderson, though it wasn't necessarily all improvements. It's partly uh, kind of changing stuff to suit editorials. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, I highly recommend it. If you want to know, if you don't mind, very minor spoilers are on the characters, um, Clarissa and Beatty. Uh, so Beatty, he just clarifies that Beatty was a book guy, was a pro book guy who uh, wanted to... Um, you know, wanted books to be successful, wanted people to read them, and then basically found them disappointing. They didn't solve, he faced tragedy and they didn't resolve that, you know, that kind of idea of of the deconvert, you know, he's deconverted and so he's angry. Um, and that kind of just, add, you kind of get the hint of that in his character, but that's what you could see expanded, you know, for a conversation or a page. Clarice, again, spoiler, turn off if you don't want that. Uh, Clarice dies fairly early on and is said to die, but... Uh, he he concludes, Bradbury concludes uh, that this probably wasn't the right ending. And in fact, we never see her corpse. We see her family move away. She's killed by the joyriders, the destructive joyriders who apparently run the cities. Um, but he um, he says, no, actually, I do develop that a bit. And she, you know, there is, she has an ending. She has a, you know, more positive ending. She deserves a happy ending. Um, and I think that's interesting because I think there is, there is a slight sense of that being a point where he's like the immediate um sort of purpose of the character to create it, a, 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 a sort of uh, it's interesting as a parallel to 1984 seeing you know the younger woman albeit not a lover in this case sort of triggering something in the man um that that's happened and done so we don't need that character now and actually initially he's obviously tempted to think okay well we'll just uh wipe away those characters as a sign of the destructiveness and nihilism of this society and then had quite reasonable second thoughts this is a good character who actually you want to see more of and and so yeah he expands on that in some of the um peripheral material anyway i recommend it as i say if you've read it tell me what you think in the comments and i'll see you next time